Welcome brave coders to a realm where imagination and logic intervene. Prepare yourself for an extraordinary coding escapade as we delve into the enchanting world of user profiles. Sharpen your coding shots and ignite your creativity for today we shall forge identities and breathe life into virtual heroes. In this exciting video today we are going to continue where we left off in the previous episode of our journey. In the last episode we successfully completed the authentication process using phone number and received a success response. Now it's time to take the next step and implement the function for creating a user profile. Imagine this, you are about to embark on an epic quest but first you need to create your own unique character profile. That's exactly what we are going to do today. So grab your virtual shorts and let's dive into the coding background. In our virtual world, we need a special class to represent our interpret users. Let's call it user, the hero of our story. This heroic class will be equipped with some incredible attributes, a username, their chosen name, a user image their personalized avatar, a user number their trusted contact and a user status a snippet of their current adventure. With these essential details, our heroes can leave their mark on the realm. Now let's create the function to accept the user object and proceed it for further action on it in authentication view model. Now in auth repository interface, we will create a powerful method called create user profile. This method will be responsible for creating the sacred user profile. So we must not take it lightly. It will take two formidable parameters, a user object holding the user's attributes and a user ID and enchanted string that represent their unique identifier. To retrieve this mystical user ID, we will summon the get user, get current user dot UID spell we learned in the previous episode. It's time to implement this method in our auth repository implementation class. Now let's dive into the implementation details. We will be using the callback flow to handle the success and failure listeners. Why? Because the add on success listener and add on failure listener of Firebase Firestore are callback based APIs provided by Firebase. To bridge this gap between these APIs and the coroutine world, we will utilize the power of callback flows. So let's get started. First, we will emit a loading state by using try send resource dot loading function. Then we will get the Firebase Firestore instance by passing it through the constructor of the auth repository. With the Firebase inst Firestore instance, we can access the user's collection and create a new document using the user's UID, user's ID or UID, whatever you can say. Inside the set function, we will pass the user object and set the values accordingly. After that, we will add an add on success listener and add down failure listener to handle the response. In the success listener, we will emit resource.success true to indicate a successful profile creation. In the failure listener, we will emit resource.error, exception.localized message, and an error occurred if it is null. To handle any errors that may occur, and we will emit both of them using try send. Now let's call this function in authentication use case also so that we can transfer this response to our authentication view model. We can now we can summon this create user profile from authentication view model using authentication use case. Finally, we will collect this result using collect latest and handle the different states accordingly. Now to show the appropriate UI to our users for our appropriate state, we will create an interface iViews that defines functions for showing a progress bar hiding a progress bar, showing an error message, dismissing the OTP bottom sheet dialog fragment, changing the views visibilities and opening the home page layout. By implementing this interface, we can reuse these functions across different classes without duplicating the code. And I'm and I'm on using these curly brackets so that we don't need to implement all the functions whenever we implement this particular interface. Now I'm going to implement this interface and its functions in my main activity. And before that, let's first create a progress bar in XML layout of main activity and now handle the visibility of that progress bar as per the function. Now in dismiss OTP fragment bottom sheet dialog method, let's find fragment with tag as we created that fragment with tag and then simply cast it to bottom sheet dialog fragment and call the dismiss function for that and after that let's just alter the visibility of our views as per our need like binding dot user name layout and uh, text input layout to and et name layout uh, change to 
visible visible and other than that the number visibility is set to gone now for the proceed button click listener i'm gonna check if my number text view is visible or not if it is visible that means it's for phone authentication process and if not that means phone authentication is already completed completed so let's move on to user creation and call the authentication view model dot create profile function and pass the user object we just created using the phone number and the name user entered now handle the views states as per the response state if it is in the loading state then call the show progress bar and it is uh, and if it is an error then show the errors with passing the error message inside that parameter para functions parameter then call error and uh, it is success if it is success then simply show the success uh, ui that will be in our case a toast that there this is the home page layout now let's run the app and see how it works we will enter the phone number click on the proceed button and enter the user's name after that we will observe the progress bar and the bottom sheet dialog and the changes in view visibility once the profile is created successfully we will display a toast message confirming the creation and proceed to the home page layout but we get an issue here which is that we didn't call the await close method in callback flow block now call that and uh, change this and uh, rectif and uh, rerun this app now let's fit now you can see that it work fine and there you have it as the virtual ink dries on our epic coding chronicles we bid you farewell valiant warriors of the code may the user profiles you crafted serve as vessels for countless adventures and remarkable journeys remember the power to create is in your hands so go forth and code with valor until we meet again may your programs be bug free and your dreams be filled with endless lines of elegant code the interfaces and the connection between the interface and the activities and how we communicate with them and how we will use how we use callback flow and why we use callback flow i hope you understand all of that in this particular video so if you like this video click like button first and if you have any question or any feedback or any query just comment it below and also subscribe the channel press the bell icon so that you never miss the update of my new videos of this particular playlist or any other playlist so subscribe the channel press the bell icon see you in the next one bye bye